Good morning and welcome to worship for Mount Auburn Presbyterian Church for November 15th, 2020. We are so happy that you can all be with us, uh, whether it is Sunday morning at 11 o'clock or some other time during the week. One of the great gifts of this time, despite all the difficulties, is that we can worship in different places around the country and around the world. We have people with us today and we can worship at different times and yet still be united. And so we are grateful today for that gift, um, even in the midst of some difficult times. We welcome you to keep up with us on our email newsletter. If you'd like to subscribe to that newsletter, you can email our office and we will put you on that list. The email address is at the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, you have, if you've been attending worship for the last three weeks or so, you will know that we are in the last Sunday of our stewardship campaign. And for those of you who are members and regular attenders of the church, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, to either fill out your estimate of giving, your pledge form online using the link that's in the email newsletter, or to uh, send in the form that you received in the mail. If you did not receive a form in the mail, or if you lost the link, again, just email the office. We will be happy to send you another form or to direct you to the online form to get you set up. The, steward, the Finance and Stewardship Committee is working really hard to get our 2021 budget set. And in order to do that, they really like to have an estimate of what sort of resources we're going to have to work together as a congregation. And so today as we give thanks for all of the resources that this congregation has and all of the resources that we collectively give into the community for justice, for peace, for the restoration of uh, those who are marginalized in society, as we give thanks for all of, all of the passing through of those resources, we also encourage you to participate in that. Again, welcome. It is great to be with you this morning. We hope that you will join us and eat pie and give thanks at the online coffee hour after this service. Uh, that information will be at the end of the service. And we hope that in the meantime, in during this, these moments, you will find this a time of centering and grounding and worshiping God together and finding community even when we're separated. Let us worship God. <laughs> this morning in our call to worship. In worship, we tell a story, a story of an unfettered love that changed the world. In worship, we tell a story, a story of how we live and how we long to live. In worship, we tell a story because we are forgetful people. So may we remember who we are. May we release the narratives that trap us. May we reimagine the world to see what God sees. And maybe may we work toward restoration. It's all that easy and it's all that hard. Let us worship holy God. <laughs>
in a prayer of confession followed by a time of silent confession. Holy God, to restore is to bring back. So today we bring our hearts back to you, our thoughts back to love, and our prayers back to love and justice. We try to stay in this place, but we confess it's never been that easy for us. We flirt with creating something new, then back away. We come face to face with an opportunity for justice, but get scared. We are offered an opportunity to rewrite our story, but we lose our way. Bring us back to this moment. Bring us back to your story where there is more than enough. Bring us back, restore us, forgive us. Gratefully, we pray, amen. God's love is abundant and God's mercy is everlasting. So hear the good news, through Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Be at peace. The first scripture reading this morning is from Genesis 33, verses one through 17. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. He put the maids with their children in front, then Leah and her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on ahead of him, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and children, he said, who are these with you? Jacob said, the children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maids drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And finally, Joseph and Rachel drew near and they bowed down. Esau said, what do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, to find favor with my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please, if I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand. For truly, to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have everything I want. So he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, let us journey on our way and I will go alongside you. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are frail and the flocks and the herds which are nursing in a care to me. 
and if they are overdriven for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will lead on slowly, according to the pace of the cattle that are before me, and according to the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord in Sair. So Esau said, let me leave you with some of the people who are with me. But he said, why should my Lord be so kind to me? So Esau returned that day on his way to Sair. But Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built himself a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the place is called Succoth. Thanks be to God. Have you ever held your breath before? Let's all try it here together. So I'm gonna say go, and then you take a big deep breath, and then when I put my hand up, you release it. So that's important that when I put my hand up, we all are breathing out together, okay? So let's try it. Go. Let's do it again. Go. Okay, last time. Go. What did it feel like when you got to release the air that you were holding in? Did you feel happy, relieved? Did it make you feel more ready? What are other ways that we release energy? Maybe through playing a sport or taking a dance class or just going on a walk? What are ways that we release anger? Maybe through drawing and expressing yourself that way or having a conversation and talking about it or maybe even doing one of the breathing exercises that we just did together. What are ways that you release happiness? Maybe through skipping or jumping or laughing. That we read today in the scripture about a year where all debts are canceled. That means that if you owed someone money, then you no longer owe them money. Can you imagine a time where you felt like you owed someone something and then you no longer owed it anymore? Did it maybe feel like that release of energy we did when we were breathing together? We carry around lots of stories, stories about money, stories about ourselves, stories about others. And God teaches us that we can release energy and we can release things. And we can release other people from debts that they owe us as they can release us from debts that we owe them. This is really good news. This means that if someone says something to you that is kind of hurtful, then you can feel that pain. But then when you're ready, you can release it. And that goes the same way that if someone owes you something, you can release them from that burden because we know that God gives us enough. And knowing that God gives us enough, we learn that we can practice releasing. Let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us enough. Thank you for every breath that you give us. And thank you for helping us to practice releasing. Amen. Our second scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Listen for the word of God. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation today. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. And he called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did 
and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water and headed for shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to shore, and there were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to let him know what, by what kind of death he would glorify God. And then Jesus told him, follow me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We started off this series a few weeks ago, this Our Money Story series with a theme, Remember. We spent some time on that Sunday three weeks ago talking about the money stories in our past, which aren't always positive. Uh, some of us have things in our past around money that we have or haven't done with regards to money that cause us, even to this day, worry, anxiety, or shame. Since that day, we have journeyed through the themes of release, um, about letting some of those money stories with baggage uh, go, letting ourselves be released from the patterns that we develop around our negative money stories, we went through the theme of reimagine, uh, in envisioning new futures, not based on the stories that we've already had and the patterns that we've already lived into and the ways of the world that we have seen, but based on uh, new possibilities that we imagine in the power and the strength and the creativity that God gives us. Today we find ourselves in the theme word restore. And we find ourselves with two very different stories, uh, neither of them having anything to do with money, but both stories dealing with pasts, uh, past actions involving harm and broken relationship. The first story that you heard was the story of Jacob and Esau. In case you're not familiar with the backstory on that, Jacob and Esau were twin brothers and uh, Jacob was the sort of wily, uh, plotting, ambitious sort of brother, and Esau was a hunter and sort of a practical man who uh, didn't, give, didn't care too much about sort of strategizing, and Jacob robbed his brother of his birthright. And then in fear of Esau, he ran away, and they didn't see each other for many, many years. So where we meet them today, Jacob is coming back to ask for restoration from Esau and to ask for forgiveness. He brings him this uh, enormous gift. It's many, many, like hundreds and hundreds of animals. It's this exorbitant gift of animals. Um, 
in order to beg his forgiveness and to be restored in their relationship. And then we have in the gospel reading, the disciples who at this point, things are a little fuzzy for them. They're a little confused. Jesus died, but now he's appeared to them a couple of times in a resurrected form. They seem to be a little understandably discombobulated about this, not sure what their future holds. And they, in this story, have gone back to to fishing, uh, to what they first knew. They've gone back to this life that they had before Jesus, because I'm guessing that they just didn't really know what they should be doing. And then Jesus appears to them uh, on the shore. Jesus sends them a catch of way more fish than they actually need, serves them breakfast on the shore, and then has this conversation with Simon Peter in particular. Jacob and Simon Peter are very different people, but they are both people who have used their gifts. In Jacob's case, his cleverness, his ability to strategize. In Simon Peter's case, his sort of big personality and presence and his closeness to Jesus. They've both used their gifts to betray people that they've loved. Now, Jacob in this story has the ability to give this enormous outlandish gift to appease his brother. And this is significant because reconciliation for them begins with Jacob essentially returning the birthright that he had stolen and then reaching out a hand to seek healing in their relationship. Esau doesn't initially want to take this gift. He says, I'm already wealthy. Actually, you stealing my birthright didn't matter in the long run. I don't need any of these things. And But the part of their healing is Jacob's ability to give to his brother what he has stolen so that they can begin on an even ground. Simon Peter, however, has nothing to give to Jesus, even the fish that he has. Uh, he's a fisherman and even the fish he has at this point came from Jesus. He has nothing to give. And Jesus has already forgiven Peter for denying him three times. But the healing in their relationship, the restoration begins when Jesus asks him three times, do you love me? And he asks him three times, mirroring the number of times that Peter denied Jesus. Peter's feelings are really hurt by this. And he keeps saying, you know I love you, you know I love you. But in Peter's case, true healing, true restoration is tied to concrete action. Jesus asks him, feed my lambs, tend to my sheep, feed my sheep. It turns out that Peter does, in fact, have something to give Jesus. He doesn't have money. He doesn't even have fish. But he does have the abundance that he has received. He has the same abundance that broke open his nets with a massive haul of fish the very first day that he met Jesus. He has the same abundance that multiplied bread and fish to feed thousands. He has the same abundance that has filled his net on this day. And this time, I think it's significant, the net holds. And this time, Peter is strong enough on his own to haul a net filled with 153 large fish to shore. No small feat. Uh, there was already fish waiting for them on the beach in the fire for breakfast. None of this, I think, is coincidental to the story that there's just more and more and more available. There's plenty and plenty and more than plenty. At this very point, when Peter and the rest of the disciples think that it's all over, that their time of following Jesus is over, Jesus is, who knows what Jesus is? God died, resurrected, God, but Jesus is not around to follow. They think it's over. And then Jesus shows up this 
well, this final time to tell them, this is just the beginning. All you have to do is turn around and share what you've been given. All we have to do is turn around and share what we have been given. And yes, this is about what we do with our money because money is an important part of how we show our values uh, in the world. But this isn't just about what we do with our money. It's about an entire way of being in the world. A way of being that doesn't just remember our old stories and hold to our old patterns of giving and receiving. This is a new way of being that recognizes those stories, that remembers them, but that realizes that they don't have, they don't hold us. Uh, we don't have to hold to our old patterns of giving and receiving. This new way of being releases us from patterns of fear and shame that have been built within us from our old stories. This is a new way of being that reimagines what the possibilities might be and starts not through a lens of scarcity and holding on to what we have, but it starts with a lens of abundance, that there is plenty and plenty and more than plenty. This is a new way of being that focuses on restoration, that offers up what we have, whatever we may have in the reparation of wrongs, that reaches out with meaningful action to right injustices that directs whatever abundance we have received toward feeding the lambs, tending the sheep, feeding the sheep. As we continue to step more and more into following Jesus, into this work of remembering, releasing, reimagining, and restoring, I invite you as individuals and us as a community to consider what abundance we have received and to consider how that abundance might be shared both within this faith community so that we have the ability to follow Jesus together as a community and how it can be shared with the wider world. Our nets overflow. Our nets overflow and yet they hold and yet we have the strength to haul the nets that Jesus has given us. So let's go tend some sheep in the name of the creator and the redeemer and the sustainer. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in a restoring God who restores our bodies through the gift of Sabbath. We believe in a restoring God who restores our souls through the gift of grace and second chances. We believe in a restoring God who restores this hurting world through the gift of mercy and God's Son, Jesus Christ. And we believe in a restoring God who invites us to join in this restoration work. As people of faith, we seek to restore creation to God by feeding the hungry, loving our neighbors, forgiving 70 times seven, welcoming the children, seeing all, loving all, and living like we belong to all. And so we will work until God's promised day. This we believe. Hear this prayer as we move into our time of offering. Let us pray. Holy God, there was Eden, and then there was East of Eden, which is all to say, this world is not what you intended it to be. You planted a garden and dreamed of Sabbath, and it was good. It was so very good. However, when we looked around today, we know that we have lost our way. So today we bring our hearts, minds, and money back to you in hopes that you will sow good. This is the work of restoration, for we want to be a restoration people. Use these gifts for your hurting world. Restore us to you, O God. Freely we have received. Now freely may we give. Amen. Same, 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 same
to our times of prayers of the people. Let us pray. Restoring God, you have always been in the business of beginning again with us, of restoration and return. First you breathed life into dust, and you guided brother back to brother after years apart. You sent prophets when the people lost their way. You fed the hungry and healed the sick. You let the children come to you you forgave us, and then you returned to remind us of your call. You have always been in the work of restoration, of seeing us, claiming us, loving us, and inviting us to return to you. Today, we come to you in prayer, asking that once more you would restore us, all of us. Restore our narratives about who we are to truth. Restore our actions towards one another in love. Restore our dreams for this world to your dream for us. When our time and place tries to teach us that our worth is our income, that our value comes only in what we produce, even to the detriment of our bodies, and that needing rest is weakness, O oh God, hear our prayer. Restore all of who we are to you. And when our time and place teaches us that a woman's body, that any body is property, and that a no is optional, O oh God, hear our prayer. Restore all of who we are to you. And when our time and place teaches that brown bodies and black bodies are less valuable than white bodies, give us the strength to speak out and to expect more from our history teachers, our churches, our law enforcement, and our politicians. Oh God, hear our prayer. Restore all of who we are to you. And when our time and place tries to ignore the impacts of our consumer practices, may we remember the hurricanes, wildfires, and tornadoes of the last year. May we remember the consequences of global warming. O oh God, hear our prayer. Restore all of who we are to you. And when our church places shame instead of caring for everyone, when we idolize tradition instead of making room for the spirit to move, and when we forget your call to love our neighbors as ourselves, O oh God, hear our prayer. Restore all of who we are to you. And hear our one final prayer as we join our voices together, praying as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, our Mother, our Holy Parent, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. from this time comforted by God's presence and challenged by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit moving through our lives and as we go into the world seeking to follow Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you and give you peace today and forever. Amen. Amen.